Now, in our previous videos, we've been talking about aerobic respiration, which happens、uh, mainly in the mitochondria. But what if our body doesn't have enough oxygen? And that means that the final stage, which is oxidative phosphorylation, won't occur. And that means that、uh, Krebs and Link reaction doesn't occur either. The body is very clever, clever in that sense to sense that. So what happens is、uh, we we say that、uh, anaerobic respiration can then happen, and in some sense you can consider it as the、um, final survival mechanism because it provides just enough ATP for us to have our normal function, like、uh, for example muscle contraction of the heart、um, and active transport to maintain our basic functioning in order to survive. There are two types. There is lactic fermentation in animals, and then there's alcoholic fermentation in plants. Just to say, fermentation is just another name of calling anaerobic respiration. It's just the breaking down of com large complex molecules to simpler molecules without the use of oxygen or electron transport chain. So first of all, we'll start off thinking about lactate fermentation. Now, lactic fermentation happens in mainly in animals, and you probably will be familiar with it as well because lactate is basically lactic acid, which you know will,、uh, is what our body makes if we have intense exercise when we don't have enough oxygen. As I mentioned before as well, the first stage of respiration is glycolysis, and that happens in the cytoplasm, and it occurs regardless of what、uh, type of respiration you're doing. So, if a body doesn't have enough oxygen, it will stay in the cytoplasm. And to undergo this particular reaction here, so we got pyruvate as a product from glycolysis, and it will start there.、Uh, what it makes is it does it directly into、uh, lactate. It uses reduced NAD to make NAD instead, rather than before, as you would know, that we try to make reduced NAD for more ATP production. This process requires an enzyme、uh, for it to occur, and this is what we call the lactate dehydrogenase. Now, as you would know from before, lactic acid、uh, is not ideal to be staying inside our cells because it will start denaturing our enzymes and proteins, giving us muscle fatigue. So we have something called oxygen debt, which is the amount of oxygen needed to break lactic acid down. And what happens is lactate enters the bloodstream and is transported to the liver. And in the liver, it reacts with the oxygen to regenerate glucose. Basically,、uh, glucose can then undergo the glycolysis again to regenerate pyruvate. And if we have enough oxygen at that point, it will go off to do the normal aerobic respiration. A bit of extra information、uh, for those of you who are interested in this process.、Uh, yes, we do regenerate glucose, which is good, and we are getting rid of the lactate. But this process is called the Cori cycle, and it actually uses up about six. ATP molecules in order for it to do so. So therefore, as you would know,、uh, we made net gain two ATP from glycolysis. But the thing is, we are using up six ATP, so we have a net loss of four ATP molecules. Therefore, this reaction here is not ideal. It will not be sustainable for us. Next, we'll think about alcoholic fermentation in plants and yeast. Again, we'll start with pyruvate. Yes, alcohol meaning referring to ethanol specifically, but actually it forms ethanol first, and then after that it makes ethanol. So this part in the first bit here,、uh, we lose a carbon dioxide from pyruvate to make ethanol, and because we're losing a carbon dioxide, this is a decarboxylation reaction, and we say that the enzyme to catalyze this reaction is called pyruvate decarboxylase. So from ethanol to ethanol, it needs to gain a hydrogen atom. So reduced NAD comes along to give it that to make ethanol, which is our final product. A bit of extra information: there is an enzyme that、uh, works here. Again, it's not in the specification, but it's actually very similarly named by the same principle, anyways,、uh, which is called ethanol dehydrogenase. Unlike lactate fermentation, which is reversible, alcoholic fermentation is irreversible. Once you Gone through this process, it's just ethanol, and that's it. You can't change it to anything else. However, as you would know, this is very beneficial for humans as well, because we can actually use this to make food. For example, you would know、um, we can use yeast and plants to make beer and wine, and that's exactly what we want to get, which is the ethanol. As you would know, beer is usually、uh, fizzy, and wine is usually flat. And the reason being, when we brew. 
beer, we keep it, we seal it tight. So the carbon dioxide in, that was made in this process goes into the, actually gets dissolved into the liquid, making it fizzy. Whereas in wine, we have a little opening which allows the carbon dioxide to escape. That's why it's flat. But anyways, ethanol is the final product and desired product in that sense. Apart from that, you can also use yeast in making bread. And of course, carbon dioxide is useful here because it makes the bread dough rise to make the actual bread. And in the process, ethanol is being made as well. However, because it's you're making bread in the oven, all the ethanol just evaporates. So you won't actually get drunk by eating bread at all. When you're brewing beer or wine, the ethanol produced is produced by the yeast, but um, some people will be then thinking about how can we kill the yeast then? Uh, how can we process it so that we don't actually eat the yeast? Ethanol become, is actually toxic, so at about 15%, it will kill the yeast in that process. So therefore, we don't actually have to worry too much about extracting the microorganisms because they'll be all dead. And there you have it. That is... Um, anaerobic respiration in different organisms. In animals, we have lactate fermentation uh, with these enzymes uh, involved. Alcoholic fermentation, we have uh, this enzyme involved to make ethanol and we can use it to make beer, uh, well, make alcohol and make bread as well.